Hey guys, welcome to Make With Me Monday. I know it's gonna take people a minute to get on, so I'm gonna cut this little page while um, people get on. So today, I'm gonna talk about how to build a paint your own bath bomb kit. So, um, these, okay, so I tagged Jen Spurlock, who is, I think, the undisputed queen of paint your own kits. So, um, if you think you're the queen of paint your own kits, then that's cool. Like, post your, post your, post your pics in the thing, you know, in the comments. That's cool. There, we can, there's, this is Narnia. We can have lots of queens, okay? So, but... <laughs> The point is that, um, so I, I started doing paint your own kits. I just did my first one for Valentine's day and it was really popular. People really liked it. Um, so I did another one for Easter and again, it's really popular. So I'm probably going to expand, um, and just create a whole section of my shop of paint your own kits because I'm telling you like people love them. So I'm going to talk to you guys about how to, um, how I build them. Now, the reason, part of the reason I tagged Jen Sparlock is I know that she does hers a little bit differently than mine. So there's not one correct way to do this. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. Um, but this is how I do mine. So the first thing I just did is I cut out, um, I printed up this little thing that's how to paint your own bath bomb. Um, it's just to open the paint and to stir it and, um, I have my bath bombs on these little cardboard tiles. So I say to use the cardboard tile to keep your, uh, your work area clean. And then um, I tell them, you know, if they switch colors, they can use rubbing alcohol to switch colors and then to let their bath bomb dry and then to enjoy it. So it's basically some little instructions. So I cut that out first. And then I'm gonna actually show you, for, I'm gonna show you everything. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step everything. Um, Hillary says that she did her first one for Valentine's too, and you were excited about them. I mean, they, they sold really well. It's actually, it's a little bit less work because you're not having to paint it. And Dan says, good morning. Good morning, Dan. So, um, I bought these little paint pots. Now I'm sure if you're, if you make a bunch of paint your own kids, you can buy them in bulk from a, another place, but I got mine on Amazon and there's two different sizes from what I can tell. These were the, I looked at <laughs> I looked at it, I swear to God, I looked at it right before the live. I think these are 15 milliliters, maybe? I don't know. I put, I put like, like maybe seven grams. I put like three grams in each paint pot. Okay, so um, I cut mine in half because I found, so I made sure to test it too. I tested some of mine to see how they did and you don't need, I mean, you really don't need a ton of paint for these. So I'm going to open them all up. And so I use for mine, I use polysorbate 80 and mica, um, except for the green where I made uh, a mica blend of mica and lakes, but I use polysorbate 80 and mica in my paint your own kits. Now when I'm painting my own bath bombs for my business, I use rubbing alcohol, but the logistics of sending rubbing alcohol and finding little bottles and stuff like that. I, I didn't like that. Plus I spray my bath bombs with rubbing alcohol when they're done, um, to help them kind of get nice and hard on the outside. And one of the things that happens is when you do that and you try to go back later and paint them with, uh, rubbing alcohol and mica, it doesn't absorb as well. So I was kind of worried about that. Like I didn't want to send them out without spraying them with rubbing alcohol cause they would maybe be powdery or crumbly. I didn't know. Um, but using polysorbate 80 and mica on a bath bomb that's been sprayed with rubbing alcohol does work and it gets a nice saturation. So that was my solution. Um, I'm pretty sure that Jen's kits for, I'm, I'm not, I'm not certain, but her kits, she just like the picture just has mica in the thing. So it doesn't have the paint. So she might either send them some rubbing alcohol or instruct them to use rubbing alcohol to paint it. I don't know. Um, so what I do is I have these little squeezy bottles and it has, um, how much I, and I use my little, 
what's it called, label maker. And I make sure to put um, two grams of Juneberry, which is the mica that I used, um, 80 grams of poly 80, and then I know, and then I have the date. So like I know when I made this, right? And um, I do that for all of these. And that makes it a lot easier to squeeze into here and not make like an insane mess. So, and then in each one, I don't fill it up to the top. I just put like, they don't usually fall over this bad. I put three grams in each little one or two, two, two to three grams, you know, they don't need to be like full up to the top. But doing this little bottle helps you to not make a huge mess. You do just have to make sure that you stir it. Uh, so like these have been sitting there for a minute and um, they will start to separate over time. One of the things I did this time for my paint your own kits is I, just gonna go ahead and close that. I included a stir stick for them this time because some of the, um, some of my customers commented that it was a little bit hard to get it all stirred up with the paintbrush by itself. So yeah. So I just fill these up and then um, I will, after that, close them up. And these stayed sealed, like they did good with shipping and all that stuff. Okay, so that's done. Now the other thing is that you, you, gotta, you gotta pick a bath bomb that's like fun to paint. So I did the Kata Easter egg set where it has like, all the different pucks that you can choose from. Blank puck. I was actually gonna just do a blank puck. I was gonna, just gonna do a blank one. As an artist, that's the most exciting thing to me is a blank canvas, but I know that people wanna have like the design. So I did the, um, I just did these randomly and then I sent them randomly to my customers. I'm not you know, having them where they can choose it. The other thing that's cool is that when I was doing this, I was like, that's a dino egg. So I'm definitely gonna do some paint your own dinosaur eggs later in the year, um, and then use the dinosaur mold to do some paint your own dinosaurs. So there's um, a lot of different things that you can do with it. I think flat, The so the other thing is when you choose to paint your own, I think that like the flatter, the molds, like the round 3D ones tend to be more difficult to paint because you can't lay it down flat on the thing. So um, yeah. So anyway, so that I used the Kata thing, right? And then I have it on this little cardboard. Okay, okay. We're going through this fairly well. So then, um, now I've seen that Jen has like dedicated bags for hers. I just went to Walmart and got some little these weren't even in the Easter section. I didn't even like, like this was this like this was what my Easter section had and I wasn't too thrilled with that. I probably will just return this because they're just too floppy for what I want. But, um, so this was in like the party section, okay? And for mine, I'm putting some Easter grass down in the bottom of it just to give it a little bit of padding. I'm putting my little egg in there. Oops, wait, just kidding. Hold on. We got to put a label on it. He's got, I put a label on it. Paint your own Easter egg. Do it yourself, lady. Okay, so paint your own Easter egg. I put that in there. Um, I give them one of the direction sheets. Right. And then I use uh, these little tiny jeweler's bags okay and I'm gonna stick my paint pots in there because I don't want that to accidentally open in the kit I I haven't had any problems with it but just that's like a CYA kind of thing and then look at these little teeny tiny sticks these are cake pop sticks believe it or not I don't know what size they are they are they are reusable and dishwasher safe 
like they're plastic cake pop sticks so they're not like the um like the cardboard ones so and i just put the little stir stick in there to help them stir it up i tuck that right in there in the front okay and jen uses jen uses little tiny paint brushes i have some like cosmetic paint brushes that are like that big so i thought about using them uh but they were like too wide for what i the details for mine so for now and i've been perfectly happy with this but i just stick the paintbrush right there and then i um use some ribbon i have an addiction to ribbon do you think my mold collection is bad okay so <laughs> Um, anyway, so then I basically wrap it right there. So like the, the paintbrush is sticking out, but it's not, it's not that bad. Wrap it right there. Tie it up with a little bow. And ta-da. My ribbon is not centered. Ta-da. You got your little paint your own kit, right? cute pretty easy pretty low like effort on my part other than like accumulating all the things so I'll uh we'll put a couple more of them together let me get this stuff out of the way so a bag um how much do they weigh let's see I don't know they weigh 5.55 minus, hold on. They weigh like 5.25. Uh, I, I label all mine to be four ounces because that way, like I rarely have to change the ounceage on mine that way. So, okay, so I go back, I put the label on He's got his little how you do this card in there. Oops, so we need some grass, Easter grass. And you can do, I mean, obviously you can do this, you could do this with clear bags. Now, so the ones that Jen has, I she has clear bags and I don't go to shows really anymore. There's just not a lot of shows to go to in my area anymore. So. I don't have to have clear bags. Like I don't need my customers to see this, but if you need your customers to see it, to like under, so that they can get what you're doing or what you're selling, then yeah, you know, you probably want to get clear bags. But um, for me, I'm just advertising it on my website and selling it like that. We don't have a lot of um, markets that are going on in my area right now. So, how much do you sell them for? Um, I believe I listed mine for eight or 10, something like that. Um, pro I'm probably not the best person to ask about like price though, because I, I, a lot of my stuff, I just, especially recently have just like been selling it at low, low prices just to get it out the door because I make a lot of stuff for this to create content for this so I just need to get rid of it a lot of times so um, I probably not like especially recently so I'm probably not like the best person to like base your cost of goods assessment on but like eight or ten I mean you're gonna do you're gonna have to do your cost of goods on it and figure out how much does it cost you to make it um, and then how much time does it cost you to make it and all that stuff what do you use for the back for the cardboard so that is a cardboard card I'll, and i'll share the links for all this stuff but those are coasters those are coasters that i got on amazon so there you go i mean it's busy did i forget the instructions on that one i did They're right here it's busy um but yeah so um i will 
weigh out a couple more for people who are joining late to show you once again how I weigh it with the um, with the and the squeezy bottles and stuff for my paint because I think that's the biggest question that people have is like how do you how do you do the paint how do you you know I I don't I haven't tried rubbing alcohol in these little paint pots I get the feeling that rubbing alcohol in those paint pots will possibly run out I don't know I get the feeling that that's like a thing that would happen so I'm assuming like if you do want to sell them with rubbing alcohol you probably need to include like a little squeezy bottle that has the rubbing alcohol separate and not put it straight into the paint pots but like I said mine is um, polysorbate 80 is in mine so and then I just fill each little one up with like three grams. Two, I mean, two to three grams. They don't need, you don't need a lot of paint, to be honest. And um, like this one, I covered the whole thing and then I did like the sides and like barely, barely even used up what was available for the paint for my customer. So that's good right you don't want them to you don't want them to be short a paint but you also want them to not have too too much they don't need too much so yeah so I use a little squeeze bottles and this is actually a trick that uh, my friend Shannon from Moringa Rose I've seen her do this with beard oil which I thought was like super clever for like putting beard oil into um the little dropper bottles so that that's i was like oh okay that could work for this and then i just put the date on it so that i know you know i don't want it sitting in there forever i don't think that there's like an expiration on it or anything i just i don't know i just want to clean it out every now and then i'm sure And once again, I labeled it with what it is. So this is, uh, this was two grams of white mica, one gram of uh, blue one, and two grams of yellow five, 80 grams of poly 80, and then the date that I made it. So you definitely want to make sure that you're doing that. This guy looks a little short. And then I'm gonna close them back up. And um, like I said, I'm gonna put links to everything I'm using so you know exactly what I'm using. But then I have these little jewelry bags. I'm gonna put those in there. A little stir stick, which I actually got from Walmart. Right? And like, if you're making a whole bunch of them, you're gonna like assembly line it. You're just gonna go down the line. Like this is, this is me going back and forth on them, so. Oh my God, it was open, okay. Um, Ashley says when you leave the mica and rubbing alcohol mixed together sitting out, the, uh, the alcohol evaporates and dries back up. Yeah, so that's actually one of the reasons I prefer to paint with rubbing alcohol um, because I can then leave, I, leave, I use like little silicone uh, cupcake molds and I just leave it out, it dries up, it's fine. If I use, like, and that's why I don't like to paint my main bath bombs with it. Number one, it takes a couple days for it to fully dry and um, number two, it's is always going to be ooey gooey and so i can't have like i mean i could have nine zillion little pots um, I, I did that originally nine zillion little pots for like every color but it's so much easier for me for my everyday regular bath bombs to use rubbing alcohol so now i don't know how it would affect like your paint your own kits 
but I definitely, I tagged Jen, so I tagged Jen Spurlock in this. If you didn't hear me at the beginning, I tagged Jen Spurlock. She has a company called The Green Rift. Um, she is the queen of paint your own bath bomb kits. Like she's been, she's been doing it for a minute. She's got like, she just looks like she knows what she's doing with those things, okay? And um, yeah, so, you know, definitely, um, if she's if Jen's here, I commenting, you know, like listen to what she has to say, words of wisdom, right? From a voice of experience. This is only my second paint your own kit, so I don't know all the pitfalls for it. I do know some of them. Like people were like, I wish I could stir it, and I was like, Oh, okay, my bad. Like, I guess you don't have a chopstick in your house, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I hear you. I hear. I got you, boo. <laughs> I got. I got a little stir sticks for you this time. So I put the um, the grass paper shreds, the bath bomb with its label, instructions for how to paint a bath bomb, the paint and the little stir stick. I put all that in there together, and I tie it up with a bow. I put my paintbrush in there, tuck it in the back it in the back and people really like this like they really like being able to paint their own bath bombs they, it's like a lot of fun I mean it's fun to do with your kids it's fun to do if you're an adult so I think it's it's a pretty easy th and like uh, the amount of work on your part is minimal because you're not having to sit there and hand paint the details on every single bath bomb right so um, yeah I think that they're cute. The um the bath bombs that so I used the um Kata mold. Now I put embeds in mine. I did have a couple where the um the embed like the color escaped. <laughs> Got a few spots on my white bath bombs. I didn't stress that much about it though. Um, cause I, number one, I painted them and they still looked fine. Number two, they're, your customers are going to paint over it. So it's fine. So, um, this, this ribbon is, so I also, I prefer, I prefer to use ribbon that has that like organza or that sheer edge to it. I've used, I have buckets of ribbon. I have like buckets of ribbon, but I've used um, like just satin ribbon and it unties really easily. So one of the things I like about this kind that has the sheer organza-ish thing to it is you saw when I tried to open that one back up. I mean, they're not hard to open, but they don't just like unravel and open on you, which if you're making like a whole bunch of sets and they start to unravel and open on you, it's not fun so that's one of the reasons I like that type of stuff so that type of ribbon that's what I'm saying okay so there you go and that is how I build my paint your own sets now I'm gonna go through and see if you guys have any questions on it um somebody else has a ribbon addiction Sarah mm-hmm um, Hillary says you used a thin popsicle stick for the stir stick. Yeah. Um, did you have one yourself? You're saying you had one yourself or you, that's what you added to your kit. Cause you could do that too. I just happened to be like in the cake baking aisle and saw these and was like, okay, that's cute. I'm just going to grab those. Um, but I definitely have somewhere. Yeah. I definitely have these. So you probably could use these two to stir it um okay Hillary says that she added it to the kit yeah so you just I mean it was just one of the comments somebody commented they were like I wish I could stir it and I was like okay I'll give you a stir stick don't worry so um uh, yeah Oh, okay. Darlene says, who is Jen? Jen Spurlock. I tagged her in the beginning of, or at the top of this post, so hopefully she will comment. And, 
add her wisdom to it. What did what did I put in the paint? Oh, I think that I answered that. It's um, polysorbate 80 and mica. Um, and then, yeah, I think that that's pretty much, oh yeah, somebody said that I forgot the instructions. I did do that. I did forget the instructions though. Um, anyway guys, that's pretty much it. I think that um, doing some paint your own kits is a really easy way to make just like an extra and you don't have to even get any extra molds you can just use the regular molds that you already have uh, and then just turn them into paint your own kit so that's a pretty easy sell on that or you could I mean you definitely could go through plates or whatever for these um, like I said like this one to me is a dino eggs and I have the dinosaur mold so I'm definitely gonna do a paint your own dinosaur kit later in the year um, yeah there's just like a bunch of different things that you could do with it. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining today. Um, yeah, that, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. We have, we have some exciting stuff that we're working on, but I don't want to announce, I don't want to announce anything yet, but it's exciting. We're excited. Hope you guys are getting excited about it too. So um, anyway, happy making. <laughs>